The music industry warned it's threatening its last major source of revenue. Coming up. Millie Vanilli frontman says lip syncing today is rife. The technology that transforms terrible singers. And the industry secret no one dares to mention. And the best new artist is Millie Vanilli. Music industry's biggest scandal took place this month in 1990. Millie Vanilli was stripped of their Grammy for Best New Artist. Girl, you know it's, yes, you know it's true. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Their worldwide number one, Girl, You Know It's True, wasn't true. It wasn't Rob Pilatus and Fab Morvan's voices in the studio or on stage. The truth came out one concert when the pre-record jammed, repeating the chorus again and again. I wanted to die. It stopped. Girl, you know it's girl, you know it's girl. 80,000 people. Girl, you know it's girl, you know. You know, I couldn't repeat it 15 times. The record company says it was in horror at the news, but the industry knew it all along, notes Entertainment Weekly. It was perfectly happy with the deception until the public found out. Its real horror was the industry secret had been leaked. With any singer today, reports Time magazine, you're most probably not hearing their actual voice. Huffington Post reports the real voice of Britney Spears, quote, hurts to hear. It's released her microphone audio without the pre-recorded backing track. Her voice sounds different on the official album. This is what leading record producer told Time. Let's just say I've had autotune save vocals on everything from Britney Spears to Bollywood cast albums. And every singer now presumes you'll just run their voice through the box. Box, as the industry calls auto-tune, destroys the voice's natural vibration, but puts it in tune with the music. Its inventor, Andy Hildebrand, found the same sound wave vibrations that oil firms used to map the Earth's subsurface could correct the voice. He's blunt on why the technology is being used. Yes, we fixed bad singers. <laughs> we invited amateur singer Zach into a studio, then auto-tuned his voice to the music. Recording. Only you can make this world seem right. Only you can make the darkness bright. Only CBS reports even those seen as great singers like Celine Dion today rely on autotune. The editor of iPad Music magazine, Electronic Sound, is Chris Dawes. He writes under the name Push. Chris, it's great to see you. How do you feel about no longer hearing real voices? A lot of the stuff that I work with and, and, uh, and, and listen to is electronic music. And increasingly, a lot of the electronic music artists are just relying on auto-tuning their voices. And to be honest with you, if I'm hearing a new artist and I hear an auto-tune, I'm out. It's about the imperfections. Even rock groups which traditionally prized raw, authentic vocals, top producer Tom Bojo says, as they now rely on auto-tune. Not using it has even become a badge of honour. Some artists like Alison Mora have started printing on their albums that no auto-tune was used on this record. Let's talk to music journalist Joe Vogel. Joe, great to speak to you. What effect is auto-tune having? When it gets so universal, it takes away uh, from the, uh, the soul of the music uh, and actually being able to hear those imperfections in people's vocals is, you know. You had singers like Bob Dylan who were praised because their voices weren't great, you know. I mean, he didn't have uh, that traditionally, um, you know, beautiful melodic voice, but that's kind of why people like uh, Bob Dylan. Once upon a time, you so fine through the bumps 
the dime in your prime. The result is singers today can't sing live, notes soul diva Jocelyn Brown, because auto-tune means they no longer train their voice. When a band member said Beyonce mimed the national anthem at the presidential inauguration, the mainstream reacted with shock, although even the singer herself said everyone's doing it. Chris, if everyone's doing it, why are people shocked and surprised? It's the secret that nobody dares speak of. When the artifice is stripped away and people see how the reality of how things are put together, that the general public are surprised and shocked, it is a bit Emperor's New Clothes. Isn't the Emperor's New Costume just superb? And it fits into perfection. Then, suddenly, from the crowd... <laughs> The Emperor has no clothes on! The Emperor began to blush. Not just less-known artists' voice holds as they fall off stage. <laughs> or drop their microphone with no change in sound. So obvious it's painful as how CBS reports Madonna's lip syncing. I once saw Madonna drop her microphone without it affecting her vocal performance one whit. Then she and her band left the stage altogether for an entire track without any change in sound or style. Elton John's considered one of the few big acts today who still sings live. He was surprised Madonna got the Q Awards Best Live Act prize. <laughs> Madonna, best f***ing live act. F*** off. <laughs> Since when has lip syncing been live? <laughs> Sorry about that, but I think everyone who lip syncs in public on stage when you pay, like, 75 quid to see them should be shot. This was his advice for her before last year's Super Bowl performance that CBS reported as painfully obvious miming. Make sure you lip sync good. <laughs> According to Madonna's publicist, quote, Madonna does not lip sync, but even the industry thinks it's gone too far. The X Factor, a show for judging people's singing ability, admits contestants are actually auto-tuned. When the news went public, shamed executives said they would stop the practice. Legal disclaimers have even been planned on Britney concert tickets, warning the show is mimed after fans at a recent performance found she wasn't singing. Fans deserted the pop diva last night, just three songs into her first concert in Perth. The reason? Fans say she is lip-syncing instead of singing. Chuck Taylor is one of the industry's most respected journalists. Chuck, it's great to speak to you. Britney seems to be a target because she's taken this to the end game. Telegraph reports the only thing live in her latest offering, live in Miami, is the reaction of the audience. Putting a warning label on Britney lip-syncing is kind of like saying... Uh, by the way, warning, in winter it's cold. We'd like to believe that those who become singers have a natural talent. That's what it used to be. Elton John has a point. I don't know that I'd pull out a gun on a singer for, for lip syncing, but I have to agree. If you are paying for the experience of seeing uh, not only a show with entertainment, but someone who sings for a living, you'd like to think that they're going to sing for real. I do believe that when you're on stage, you need to give it your best shot. It's a demanding gig. So my warning, Brittany, is don't take on such a demanding role if you really can't deliver it night after night and please the fans that are there paying a small fortune to not only see you live, but fly to Vegas and stay in a hotel and pay for meals and cabs. It's expensive, so you've got to do more than just dance around with a snake around your neck. According to Britney Spears' publicist, Britney does not lip sync. Let's get a view from inside the industry. Fab Morvan, formerly of Milli Vanilli, really great to speak to you. How common is auto-tune and miming among artists? Auto-tune is the standard 
in the music industry today. Whether you're a top singer or whether you're a, a, a low, range, low range singer, the fans of uh, Britney Spears have been with her since Hit Me Baby One More Time. And then when they, they grow up and then certainly they're more aware of the world of entertainment and they realize that since they've been going to the shows, she's never sang live. Yeah, do you understand why people say they're getting tired of it? Another thing is that when people record vocals nowadays, they sing the verse and then the chorus is recorded just once. Then the chorus is flown in, in each part of the record. Back in the days, you know, people sang every chorus so that you don't have this flow of things anymore. It's very sterile. Okay, Fab, give us a few lines of a real voice. Okay, so um, I know people love this song anytime, so uh, I'll do that one, okay? Oh, how many times can I tell you? How many ways can I show? I'm never ever gonna be the kind to give up or the one to let go. Oh, you built a wall around your heartache, but I'm gonna tear it down, tear it down. As far as I am concerned, nothing's gonna get in my way, my way, my way, my way. Fab's turning the Milli Vanilli concept and current trends on their head. He's part of a new wave of musicians that always sings live and uses the real voice on studio tracks. The Economist knows live performances are the last big earner in an industry in crisis that has been crippled by free downloads of music from the internet. But this top music critic issued a stark warning if they keep tricking the public. Singing live is the high wire act. The possibility something might go wrong not only gives the performance an edge, but drives artists to go to greater heights. Singers talk about transcendent moments that occur live, when the Holy Spirit comes down and they hit notes they didn't even know they had in them. But if audiences start to believe that not even live is live anymore, gig attendance could find itself plunging down the same black hole as the rest of the music business. The Emperor agreed. Had he learned his lesson? Time would tell. <laughs>